Um, there is this thing called the Farmer Mac or the uh, USDA loan. It is provided by the Department of Agriculture, okay? And it is for or designed for rural properties in areas that are lower income, depressed, low population to incentivize farmers to stay around. Now, the good thing or the bad thing about this is, is that the house must qualify as well as the borrower. And if you go to the USDA.gov and you jack around with their website long enough, you can actually find uh, a place where you can type the address in and it will come back and tell you if this house qualifies. So for an example, there is not a house in Orlando, Florida that qualifies because it is too populated. The average income's too high. So there is no USDA loans used inside of Orlando. You go to a little bitty city that I live in, like Nashville, Indiana, just about every house qualifies because the county is a small populated county. The average income's a little lower. So it is designed to help people buy property in those areas. So the house has to qualify as well as the person. All right. So those are the three big ones that everybody likes. The FHA loan, the VA loan, and the USDA loan. And if you notice, I just said it because it's actually an FHA insured loan. It's actually a USDA uh, VA guaranteed loan. And it's actually a uh, USDA alone. Now, I don't want to get into the fact that USDA actually does loan money. They could loan their own money. That is called a direct USDA. And they actually will give money to or guarantee or insure for the lender loan. So the USDA actually does both. Where FHA does not directly loan money, the lender loans it, the FHA insures it. The USDA could loan the money directly. That's called a USDA direct loan. Or they could tell the lender, hey, you loan it and we'll insure it. That is a USDA insured loan. So it actually has both of those. All right. So let's take a small break because we're going to come back and talk about some other financing techniques here in just a second. All right. So let's shift for a minute and talk about now some other financing techniques. Now, do you guys, did you guys ever watch The Arrow was put on by CW, but it was about the superhero, the green arrow, and he would have all these arrows. This one has an exploding tip, and this one's a grappling hook, and uh, Hawkeye was the very similar Marvel version. I'm sorry I'm letting my nerd show here. But <clears throat> I look at these loans kind of like that arrow in your quiver. These are loans that you might know about, that you probably would not use very commonly. Matter of fact, they are so uncommon that you would probably need to seek out a special company to do these loans, all right? The first one is called a package loan. A package loan is one in which the lender allows the borrower to cover both the real property and personal property as collateral for the loan. When you borrow money for a mortgage, the house is what they look at. And we always have talked about, well, I want to leave the washer and dryer. That washer and dryer has very little value compared to the overall value of that real property. So most mortgage companies go, ah, don't worry about it. You know, it's worth 500 bucks and you're buying at 350000 It's so in insignificantly small, they don't take it into consideration. But let's say you're buying a 100-unit apartment complex that comes with 100 sets of washers and dryers and 100 refrigerators and all of this other stuff. Now that percentage of personal property may be a larger percentage of the purchase price and you may have to seek out a package loan 
so that you can use both the real property and the personal property as collateral. Sometimes you will see this happen with new home sales where there's all kinds of other cover, like the floor covering or the major appliances that might be in it. So that could be a different loan. It, the big thing to remember is it allows you to mortgage both real and personal property, okay? The second loan you might see is a thing called a blanket loan. A blanket loan is one loan, but it may be using multiple pieces of property as collateral. Think about throwing a blanket over three or four houses. Instead of one house to collateralize one loan, you might get one loan and use three houses as the collateral. That would be a blanket loan. Very common in developers going out and buying 100 acres and then subdividing those 100 acres into one acre lots. They're going to need a loan to buy the entire thing, but they have to sell some of it out. So let's look at this. In this blanket loan, you may have three houses as collateral and you've got one $300,000 loan, right? So if you were to pull the title work on just one of those properties, you are going to see a lien of $300,000 and a value of 100. That looks like it's upside down. How do I clear that lien? Well, there is a very special paragraph inside of this blanket loan called a partial release clause. A partial release clause right here. Now, once again, remember, this is a specialized lender. You are not going to have to remember this except for the test you're about to take because the lender understands this. This is what they do. And how this partial release clause works is like this. It's going to say, look, Raymond, if you want to sell this house for 150, we will release the lien on it as long as you pay down a sufficient amount of the principal. So you sell this one rental property for 150, and let's say you knock off 100. They will release that lien on that house and you keep 50 grand and you paid 100 to the loan. Now that house has been sold and it's gone. And then you play the game and do the thing again. I sell this for 50 and what I'm going to do is keep 50. The partial release requires me to pay down a substantial amount so what I'm going to do is pay down this loan and they will release that lien. And then I sell the third one and a hundred goes and look what that hundred does. I keep the 50. That hundred now pays off all the release and all the houses are now sold and I made a profit of $150,000. That is a blanket loan. One loan, multiple pieces of property as collateral. An opened-in loan, an opened-in loan, think of it almost like a line of credit, which is confusing because we have something here, down here, called a home equity loan or a HELOC, which is called a uh, line of credit. That line of credit actually works like a loan. <laughs> All right, kind of confusing how that works. So an opened-in loan is where a borrower that may have equity goes out and gets the ability to use the money. They don't necessarily use it. 
it is used for a future loan. And as long as you don't take any borrow money out, there's no monthly payment on it. The second you take money out, you would pay the interest rate on that portion that you took out. So if you got approved, let's say for your $50,000 of equity, but you only used 5,000, you would only pay the interest on the five grand because that's the amount that you are using it. It is open to a loan. That's the way to look at it. Now, a construction loan. A construction loan is a short-term, high-interest-rate loan, usually less than 12 months and usually more than the current market interest rate. Now, can anybody think of why the interest rate would be higher on a construction loan? Well, the answer you should have came up with is because there is literally no collateral yet, right? It's a new build, a construction loan. So there's actually no house for the collateral. When I go and borrow money to buy a house and we sign that mortgage, I've told you many times that is the collateral and that house has to be worth something and that's why the appraisal comes out. In a construction loan, there is no house. It is appraised on plans. The appraiser is going to look at the building documents and plans and go, okay, when this is done, it should be worth 400 grand. But there's more of a risk, so the bank's going to go, well, okay, we'll loan you the money, but it's certainly not going to be at 6%. It's going to be at 8%. But it's only 12 months long. And most lenders will not do this short-term high interest rate loan called a construction loan if they do not get the long loan after that, the 30-year mortgage. It is designed to be paid off or replaced by a takeout loan. So you borrow the money at 12 months, and then at the end of the 12 months, you make a balloon payment. And how do you do that? You refinance it with a new long-term 30-year fixed mortgage because now the interest rate will be lower because now there actually is a house that is done, okay? And when you get approved for this loan, you do not hand you the money. If they did that, I would be in Barbados daring them to come and find me, all right? No, what happens is you get the money and it's in your bank account and then it is worked on what is called the draw system. The draw system is where the contractor who is building your house actually submits paperwork for you and goes, hey, dude, um, I need some money. I've done the, I've poured the pad in the driveway and I've built the frame. I need to pay those guys. So you would submit to the bank, hey, I need to draw $100,000 out. And the bank would send out their person to look at it and go, yeah, yeah, they did that. So here's a hundred grand and that would pay that contractor. Now he's like, great. Now I'll put the drywall up and the carpet in. And then he comes in and goes, dude, I need a second draw. I need got to pay those guys. Great. Here it is. And they do this process right up until the very last draw. And they shut the door, clink, and close it. House is done. They draw out the last amount of money. Now the builder has been paid. You have a loan that is now called due. And now you have a house, so you will then refinance that short-term mortgage called a construction loan with your new permanent loan and take it out or refinance it through a balloon and go, oh, I owe that 400 grand. But now this house 
is worth 500 because the appraiser has come out and look at it. Why did I choose 500? Pick that because the loan amounts 400 that I got to pay off and the value is 500. That's an 80% loan to value and I won't have PMI. That's what you hope happens. And by the way, you can do, do this to be your own general contractor and you end up with a house that's worth 500, you owe 400, you've got $100,000 in equity. Or if you want to be a home builder, that's how home builders make profit. The house is appraised at 500, so they sell it for 500, they pay off their construction loan of 400, and they made $100,000 as the builder. So this same process works both ways for the builder or the consumer if you want to build your own home. It's called a construction loan. 